Hey there, Sharon Hoyer Olson here. Let's talk about regulatory strategies to supersize and grow your business. I'm going to share five strategies that I use successfully for over three decades in the Italian food manufacturing business that have everything to do with this topic today, regulatory strategies. I'm going to share a couple of examples of companies that have done an incredible job embracing and using regulatory strategies, besides my own use of it, uh, to supersize and grow your business. They're all household names. I'm going to share three warning companies and uh, examples that didn't keep up with the regulations, didn't keep up with the technology and the changing times, which is the same thing. Uh, there's regulatory uh, things that happen in just about every industry that there is, except, I suppose, for illegal ones, but I wouldn't know about those. But I don't think that they follow the law, so they certainly don't follow any regulatory agencies. Uh, but... I'm going to share the examples first, and then I'll dive into the five strategies that I've used really, really successfully to actually embrace and use regulation and regulatory compliance as an advantage, a competitive advantage uh, in the food industry for sure and in other industries as well. So let's think of some examples of industries. Let's do the bad ones first. Let's do the bad, get them out of the way. Uh, does anybody remember Blockbuster? I totally remember Blockbuster. There used to be a Blockbuster... Uh, uh, in most small towns and almost everywhere, but they didn't keep up with the digital technology and the changes in not only consumer demand and, and what consumers were wanting, but the uh, entertainment industry's compliance and regulatory uh, expectations. And so they no longer exist. I think it was 2010 that they filed bankruptcy and uh, were no more. Same year I had a sudden cardiac arrest. Kodak is another one. Kodak was the leader and actually came up with digital <laughs> photography and that technology, yet they didn't implement it fast enough and other companies swooped in and are now the leaders in the digital marketing industry. I think Kodak's still around, but I know they filed bankruptcy in 2012, so maybe they aren't still around. I guess I don't know. Uh, I, I haven't had a Kodak camera since our cell phones took over that technology. Hint, hint. Uh, Blackberry. Did anybody have a Blackberry? I used to have a Blackberry. Blackberry was the leader in smartphones and they let Samsung and Apple come in and swoop out a lot of because it was uh, technological, but also regulatory and compliance and what customers wanted. They weren't uh, responsive enough to stay in business. So those are some examples of companies that didn't keep up, didn't comply with either consumer demand and needs and desires or and or because regulatory uh, guidelines and things tend to go along sometimes with customer uh, desires, but also with customer safety and things that the government thinks we should pay attention to, like food safety, which I 100% agree with. I was always ahead of the curve when it came to, ahead of everybody, not ahead of the curve, on the leading edge of what was right for food safety, security, and things in my food business. Uh, and I'll share some of the strategies of how I did that and why I did that, because it did give me a competitive advantage in that industry. Uh, let's talk about a couple of good examples of uh, companies that have embraced regulation and regulatory and were aware of what was coming down the pipe and took advantage of it to grow and supersize their business. Of course, Tesla comes to mind immediately because they, uh, Elon Musk and, and his organization, embraced electrical car technology and partnered with the regulators and compliance people to make sure that they were designing in and on the leading edge of that entire industry. And they lead the electric car industry today. And now with all the new directives and new government uh, issued mandates to be a certain thing and have all electric cars by a certain time period, they're way ahead of the game and will definitely win that one. Well, I don't know if they definitely will look at it. You never know. Sometimes the leaders don't, but I suspect that they will. Airbnb is another example of an organization that navigated the regulatory challenges on a worldwide basis in terms of uh, the hospitality industry by collaborating with regulators and policymakers to make sure that they could do what they were doing. And they and have totally... Uh, revamp the accommodations industry and the, that whole sector of the economy. Uh, Amazon is another one, of course, that continuously adapts to regulatory changes and works with uh, diff across industries, right, and across things as a retailer, a global, I think they're a global retailer now, uh, to 
deal with antitrust issues and all kinds of things, data security, uh, customer and consumer privacy, things like that. They've been working with the policymakers to make sure that they're, number one, doing what's right for, for their customers and for their business, but also so that they can grow and build and become a, I guess, a global uh, dynamic. So what are some of the strategies that we want to use in order to embrace regulatory things? Because they're going to be part of our life. You're going to pay taxes, at least in the United States, and you're going to probably fall under some organization, some national organization's guidelines. Again, unless you're doing something illegal that you need to be in compliance with or you'll get in trouble. OSHA, if you have a certain number of employees, USDA, if you're dealing across state lines and dealing with food things, including meats and things like that, meat, poultry, seafood, all these things, shrimp, things like that. Uh, Department of Agriculture covers pretty much every other food source that needs to be in compliance with different things. So the first thing you want to do is be proactive about compliance monitoring. Somebody in your organization, doesn't have to be you, the owner or the operator, usually isn't, has to pay attention to what's going on with respect to the organizations and the, the entities that regulate your industry. For me, it was the USDA, Department of Agriculture, OSHA. I had a lot of them. In the food industry, we have a lot. Uh, and so I, early on, and let me see if I want to talk about this in another step. Mm, yeah, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till step the third strategy. Uh, but you got to be aware of what's coming. And if you're smart, you are uh, an active participant. I used to volunteer on the different committees that were in the different um, overseeing agencies and helping. Uh, there's always one in every industry. But I would participate in those so that I could give input to what was going to come out of the USDA. Otherwise, guess what happens? In most industries, the biggest current players in the industry are involved in those discussions with regulatory and compliance agencies, and they make the rules, right? And a lot of times, I was a little person, right? A very small company compared to giant food manufacturing plants. And what happens is they make the guidelines and the rules, and the little people, the little smaller manufacturers, a lot of them cannot compete because they not they don't have the finances and the wherewithal and the resources to comply with some of the rules and regulations that are created by the bigger organizations. The bigger organizations do it because they have the economies of scale and they can. And so I made sure that I participated in those groups to and, and was always on the leading edge and aware of what was coming so that we were always proactive and were aware of and putting systems and processes and procedures in place to make sure we were always more than compliant, right? My, my philosophy was always, if I wouldn't let my kids or me consume it, then it wasn't the right thing to do. And if it's not the right thing to do, you just don't do it. Uh, agile business processes is a second strategy. We've talked about that a lot. You gotta be flexible, you gotta be agile. You have to know that things are always gonna be changing and be willing to roll with those changes and flow and do what's right for your business. Third is strategic partnerships. And this is the one that really helped me to supersize and grow my Italian food manufacturing business. Uh, I actually, and, and maybe it's because in corporate, I did a lot of audits and I was in quality for my corporate jobs. And so I knew the importance of processes and partnerships and teamwork and all these things. But the first thing I did when I purchased the Italian food manufacturing business was to form alliances and friendships and relationships with all of my compliance folks, all of my compliance, all my regulatory. I contacted all of them and started networking and having relationships with them. Why? Because I saw them as the experts in what I needed to know to supersize and grow my business. And they knew it and they knew that I appreciated them and they appreciated me and my input and my feedback and back and forth. And we had a real partnership for, you know, over three decades in that industry. Uh, fourth, we want to invest in innovation. Spend some of your research and development and your improvement money and resources and time and energy on innovation and things that can help you, number one, to grow and build your business, but also to remain safe, compliant, uh, and do what's right for your customers. And then finally, the fifth one is, of course, continuous education and training. One of the things, it's kind of like taxes in the IRS. I I gave up on doing my own taxes, I don't know, probably in the er, 
probably the late eighties when I had too many complicated things going on. I used to do it all myself. And then life got busy and I was doing more and more things. And I'm like, I, it changes every year. I'm like, I'm not going to keep up with this. I need to find an awesome accountant. And that was my first experience with actually picking experts that would help me uh, in different areas and aspects and build my team for my own businesses. Uh, but we always need to be or have someone in our organization for sure that is continually learning and educating the rest of the organization on anything with respect, of course, not just compliance, but compliance and legal challenges and issues, things like that. We talked about that a little bit with the uh, intellectual property strategy. So love to know your experience with uh, compliance. Do you have a lot of regulation in your industry? Do you struggle with it and push back on it and hate it? Or do you embrace it as a strategic advantage for your business? Because it absolutely positively, I'm proof positive that it can be. I've made millions and millions of dollars because I was in partnership with the regulatory agencies because it helped my business to grow and build where other businesses my size would have struggled and a lot of them went out of business uh, because they weren't compliant. All right, that's all I've got today. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, have an awesome day and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.